Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from PTT Tom's Tech Time with another episode about photography. I have just taken some really amazing panoramas, raw panoramas. And now the question is, how can we stitch them together easily? Let's take a look at it. Let's get started right away in order, not to waste a single minute of your precious time. Here we go. We have the folder with our panorama files. All of them are DNG raw files. There is not a single JPEG file hidden in here. And I can tell you that stitching them together is just as simple as stitching together JPEGs. Let's get started by selecting all files, doing a right click on them, hovering over open with and then selecting Adobe Photoshop CC. This is now not only going to open up Photoshop itself, but it's going to open up a tool within Adobe Photoshop, which is named Adobe Camera Raw. And we probably all know it because we want to use the full power of raw photography. And here we go, Adobe Camera Raw with all the single photographs. And right now we could start to mess around with the settings of each single photograph and we could then try to merge it somehow. But let's not do it that way. Let's do it the simple way. Let's get started by selecting all single photographs over here by tapping Command A on a Mac or alternatively, you can click at the symbol and click at Select All. And right after that, we want to click at Merge to Panorama at the bottom here. And now we got to give the computer a few seconds to stitch together the photographs and create a preview. Here we go. This is our preview and it looks quite sweet already. Sometimes though there are minor problems and usually you can get rid of those by changing the projection mode to cylindrical, even though perspective is most of the time not going to be a good solution. It just doesn't work with most panoramas. Usually your go to projection mode is spherical, but you can try cylindrical if you're just having some some problems with the spherical projection. So once we're done and we're happy with it, we can go down here to where it says auto crop. Let's just enable that and we can see ta da it cuts away all these transparent uh, areas in the background, which is super sweet and we could be really, really happy. But personally, I'm not happy with the photo because we can see that it cuts the water right here and I don't like it. It's too close to the stones because there is still some information left, some, some water photography information. So how can I fill these transparent areas? Adobe gives us a really powerful tool named Boundary Warp. Let's just take the switch and move it. Let's take a look at what happens. Did you see it? It warps the images. Sorry, it warps the images and ta-da, fills all the empty spaces. You have though to be careful when your photograph, for example, contains too many straight lines. If, for example, you're taking photographs of a skyline with many towers, sometimes the warp effect makes especially the straight lines look a bit odd. But in this case, it's just water and it works perfectly. We're already done. We can click at merge up here at the top, which is going to open up a folder and we have to save our raw panorama. I'm just going to save it to the folder where I am already storing the single photographs. Simply tap at save and we're good to go. Now down here at the bottom, we're having our real raw panorama and we can start to use it. By the way, there are single photographs that you can download raw photographs at tomstechtime.com slash panorama. Because over there you will find the photographs, you can download them for free and then you can start messing around with it yourself and you can just check if you are comfortable with the workflow, what you would enhance, what you would not enhance and whatsoever. Feel free to download them again, tomstechtime.com slash panorama. So right now I would just change the, uh, the light temperature a tiny little bit because that is one of the amazing things about raw foot photographs, right? And punch in some clarity, briefly add some vibrance and some saturation, brighten the shadows a bit while raising, whoops, while raising the contrast at the same time. Wait, we can even punch in more colors in this case, even though usually I like the decent colors. Now we can use some extra saturation and the purples I want to raise just for the evening uh, mood, you know, and uh, that's, that's already, that's already it for a super fast edit. 
Maybe bring the highlights down a tiny little bit and raise the contrast instead. Maybe bring the exposure up a tiny little bit. Again, you could use all the tools that are offered or you could, for example, check all the, the, the directions. Is the photograph really straight? As I can see here by following the lines, it's not perfectly straight. Now looks better. Okay. Let's just say this is a good first draft of a panorama. And once we're done, we can either immediately save the image or we click at open image. That is now gonna take us back to the main screen of Adobe Photoshop. And ta-da, we're done and we can now start just to work on the panorama as we usually would, or we click on file, save as to export it, maybe as a JPEG to upload it somewhere on Facebook or Instagram or somewhere. Basically, this tutorial was not about how to color grade or enhance the panoramas, but how to stitch together raw photographs to create a panorama. Thank you guys for watching. You can, again, feel free to download the test photographs at tomstechtime.com panoramas. This was Tom from TDT Tom's Tech Time over and out. Stay tuned, fly safe.